According to WaterAid, it's estimated that 23.8 million Ugandans, 32% of the population, currently lack access to safe drinking water. Despite an abundance of groundwater in the country, much of this is difficult to access due to a combination of socio-economic, political and geological factors. With a population projected to double over the next 30 years, compounded by the effects of climate change, the water situation in Uganda is only likely to deteriorate in years to come. As part of the University of the West of England's annual water security programme, five students were invited to spend a month in the Kizuro district of Uganda to explore some of the issues there related to water scarcity and poor quality drinking water. The water security project works in partnership with the Water and Sanitation Programme, or WATSAN for short, which is run by the Diocese of Mahabura. In a district with an estimated 57% of residents lacking access to safe drinking water, their efforts have helped to build over 200 rainwater harvesting tanks in the past six years. Through speaking to a variety of local stakeholders, this film explores some of the problems faced by residents of Gizoro in relation to water scarcity and poor quality drinking water, as well as how organisations such as Watsan, in partnership with the University of the West of England, is attempting to tackle water-related issues in the district. The Kizoro district of Uganda is home to roughly 280,000 residents and is geographically situated at the most southwesterly point of the country, sharing borders with both Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. A combination of socio-economic and geological factors specific to the district help to explain why such a high proportion of its residents still do not have reliable access to safe drinking water. There was a lot of water scarcity in this area. Partly because of reasons that um, uh, the government does not have adequate money and resources to provide water to every citizen in this place. And therefore, we had to look for a way to supplement what the government is doing so that, we, so that those that the government cannot provide, we can also find a way of providing. But the second thing is, uh, geologically, uh, this place is highly volcanic. During the volcanic age, when, when this place was being formed, potential wells and water sources were buried down as there was burning uh, due to volcanic activity. And so to reach the water table in this place, you must dig too far down and uh, therefore there is a very big area where you will not have natural water sources. So, so, so in terms of therefore need, it is a little bit difficult and is very costly, even for government, to provide water under those geological circumstances. So we are in a disadvantaged area geologically, and that's why it is not easy to, to, to have water. The consequences of water scarcity are numerous. Perhaps the most obvious being the detrimental effects that a low level and irregular consumption of clean water can have on human health and general well-being. However, it's not just the scarcity of drinking water which affects the residents of Kizuro, but also the cleanliness of what little water there is available. Potter's Village is a local prenatal and paediatric facility which regularly deals with patients suffering from water-related illnesses. I think the problem we have in Kisoro area uh, is not just the scarcity of water itself, but even the water that is there is not very safe. Those who have water uh, have dirty water. They, they, this water is being shared by cows and humans and you find they're drawing from springs. And these springs, they have a lot of contamination. That is, the people themselves and the animals, and this is the water they're taking home for use. And very few people can even afford to boil this water. They leave it to settle, and when it has settled, the, when the, the dirt goes down, they just take off the upper bit and drink. And so I could say 
possibly like 70% of the cases that are being managed right now as a result of water. We are getting diarrhea, vomiting, typhoid, worms, those things, all those diseases happen, dysentery happens. We've lost some babies here uh, because of, you know, late management. People bring them late and uh, by the time you are trying to intervene, uh, possibly the infection has gone way too, too, too far and you can't maybe rescue the child. So it's, it's deadly. It comes as no surprise that the regular consumption of poor quality water carries with it the likelihood of contracting dangerous and occasionally life-threatening diseases. There are, however, also a range of secondary issues closely linked to the task of collecting water itself. Recently, because of the long queues where water was found, you'd find that people are going there late in the evening. People are still at the well from like, uh, you find up, up to around 9 p.m. in the dark, people are still drawing water. And these are young girls. So some of them, they are, of course, uh, there's a lot of violence at the wells. The ladies are exposed to defilement and the rape cases. And it's not new, it has happened. It keeps happening. Actually, the, child, the danger is that sometimes because of the stigma, some of these people do not even tell what happened to them. And uh, all of a sudden you find girls are being pregnant at the age of 13, 14. Girls are being pregnant. You ask them, how did it happen that I was raped while I went out to fetch water? Because there is that overcrowding, people are fighting to get water and go home early. And you find women are raped, they are beaten on the wells, and because they also tend to move in the night to get water, sometimes they meet these wild dogs' wolves, and they are beaten by dogs. Especially in the dry season, you find very many cases of those dog bites, and that's also a problem to us. And this one also has affected the attendance of children in school. There is a lot of absenteeism in school because they have to go to fast fetch water for bathing, for washing uniform, for food. So they have to move to different areas, long kilometers away from homes, and you find they are absent in school and has brought us problems. There are very many issues about water. It is clear that the water scarcity in Kizoro brings with it a range of problems for the district's residents, many of which fall beyond the more direct health implications caused by irregular consumption of clean water. It is for this reason that the efforts of the Watsan programme to build rainwater harvesting tanks in rural communities throughout Kizoro are so vital. Not only do these tanks provide residents with a reliable access to safe drinking water throughout much of the dry season, but their close proximity means that they also free up time previously spent travelling long distances to fetch water. There is good rain. For most of the year, we have adequate rain. I should say that the, 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 the longest dry season starts from June to August, three months. And then there is a shorter dry season, January and Feb. So those are literally five months in a year which are dry. The rest of the six the rest of the uh, six months away is a wet season. So we, we, we thought that uh, investing in rainwater harvest, since most of the time of the year we have adequate rain, actually even sometimes excessive rain, we could tap that water and store it so that even for a big period of the dry season, we have stored adequate water to push us through the dry season. As long as you are able to put a structure that contains water, uh, you can tap the water from any roof, guide the water to, to a reservoir which is made, in, made artificially, and uh, the productivity of the, of the entire family is improved. Because the time that would be spent on fetching water is converted into other uh, productive ventures. So that stability of a mind makes a person think better on solving other problems, there is no stress. And uh, children now have more ample time to go to school and study. So school absenteeism and late coming is reduced as a result of the, uh, of the water being at home. Continued support 
would allow for the expansion of the program and would vastly increase the benefit greatly received by the residents of Gizoro, who share the hope that one day sourcing water will no longer be an issue.